Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you. I hope you had a good lunch. Thank you for joining us for Writer's Workshop. We're going to make this one quick today because we're going to be writing our first drafts. Here's what you're going to need today. There should be, I should have posted by now, if not, it should post in about 60 seconds, of a first draft Google Doc assignment on Google Classroom. If you have not yet started <clears throat> a first draft of your fantasy fiction story, then you, there's a document right in there for you to start that. If you have already started the first draft of your fantasy fiction story, then what you're going to do is click View Assignment, then click Add or Create, and you're going to select Google Drive and pick your Google Doc that's in your Google Drive where you started your first draft, and you're going to attach that to the assignments. If you need help on that, then we can talk about it in small group. All right, let's get into it. Today, here's our I can up here. I can create the necessary conditions to allow me to focus on writing. And I can write a draft of my fantasy fiction story using the planning work I have already done. We've been talking and planning for the last couple of weeks now on how we're going to write and what kind of fantasy story we're going to write. We've been talking about the, some of the common kinds of fantasy fiction, some of the kinds of genres you might see. We've been talking about some commonly found story arcs that might happen. And we've been thinking a lot about what we've read in great fantasy fiction as readers that we can sort of start to apply to our own writing. Today we're going to be doing what's called kind of a flash draft where we're going to be really sitting down and spending some quality time with our writing. We can do all this planning in the world but we can't get into the nitty-gritty of what it means and what it looks like to really work on our writing until we, well, until we write, until we put something uh, substantial down on paper then we can go in and work on it. If there's nothing on our page then there's nothing really to work on yet. So it's up to us as writers to start and put a first draft down so then we can start to pick through it and make some alterations and add some things and subtract some things and come out at the end with a really, really strong fantasy fiction story like I know you can write. So here are some tips and steps for remote writing success. The first one is a distraction-free workspace. One of the things I've been hearing from fifth graders is it's sometimes hard to just commit and do something for an extended period of time. It can be because there's a lot at our hands. There's a lot at our disposal when we're in distance learning and there's nobody really checking up on us or looking over our shoulder and telling us what to do and when except for these live lessons. So it does take a little bit of um, self-motivation and as fifth graders we can certainly do that so we're gonna start with a distraction-free workspace all right turn that TV off just turn it off right close YouTube close it up close all browser windows you don't need open okay if you've got clever open or Padlet open or Flipgrid or anything like that that can be a distraction and you can maybe you'll get like a ding because somebody posted something on Padlet and then all of a sudden you're not worried about your writing anymore okay so close everything out that you don't need this is just like what we do in the classroom right we don't have our math workbook with us while we're in quiet 10 working on writing right we don't have our science textbook there we don't have just any old reading book okay we're avoiding those distractions and we're getting um, anything superfluous out of the way so that we can concentrate fully on our writing. So we're closing all browser windows we don't need. Instrumental background music only if it helps. I know for some of you it helps to, you know, I like the, like the, the lo-fi hip-hop instrumental beats. Um, and so I'll have those occasionally open in the background while I'm doing work. Or some classical music or some jazz music. Anything that has words or lyrics tend to be, it can be tricky to write your own words while there's other words going on in the background. It can be a little, it's like listening to two conversations at the same time. And so I would highly recommend using instrumental music only, so nothing with words, 
or if instrumental music doesn't help you or you're spending too much time looking for the perfect playlist, it's probably not helping, so go without music, okay? Um, have your planning materials with you. So uh, we all worked on story arcs, so you could have that open. That's a browser window that you do need, okay? Or if you wrote your story arc on paper, you could have it out in front of you on paper. If you, any other additional writing, like any character sheets or info, if you started write, done, doing some writing about your main character, what kind of character uh, you're gonna write, you can have that out in front of you. All of your, really your background research or your background planning into your writing you want to have available to you so you can use it if you as you write you go oh wait i need to look back at this piece of research that i did go look at it right and then lastly set a timer and stick to the timer i've got a timer here that i can set currently it's going to up but i can set it to go down <clears throat> Right? Ta-da. Set it so it's going down. So I might set my timer for 15 minutes, okay? And then, as you're writing, stick with that timer. Let's say after five minutes, I get to a point where I'm kind of stuck. <clears throat> and I'm like, oh, I'm kind of done with this section for now, okay? Does that mean I go do ST math? No. Does that mean I go read? No. Stick with your writing. Okay, there's some options here if you get stuck on a section. The reason we wrote a story arc is you could start writing a different section of your story because you've got the whole thing mapped out if you get stuck on one section. Or you could just sit and think and close your eyes and imagine yourself in that scene. Okay, what might happen next? What details jump out to you and write those down? Okay, for a first draft, for a first draft, everything is fair game. There are really no bad ideas um, to your first draft. The only thing, the only, the only bad thing to do is to do nothing at all for your first draft. Because once you get a bunch down on paper, then you and your small group in writing can go through it and look and see, oh, okay, well this, this feels a little bit extra, this doesn't make a little bit of sense, this bit is great, I'd like to see more of it. And then as you go through multiple drafts, then you start to refine your writing and make it feel and sound more like what you'd read in a published novel or a published short story, okay? But the, the only mistake to make here is to not write anything, okay? Even if you're stuck, Start writing about how maybe that's a plot point, right? Maybe your main character is now a character that has trouble making decisions. And they've got to get started with something, okay? So again, I'm keeping it short. Um, and sticking to these, these tips, these tips are also up on Google Classroom in the Writer's Workshop section of the Classwork tab, okay? If you want to look at them again after this video is over, or you can reload this video and watch it again, pause it on my face. So you can know what to do. We have a question in the chat. What if in the middle of writing you decide you want to change a tidbit of the plot? It's your writing. As long as it's a plot that has some rising action and a resolution and it feels like the character went on a journey and everything feels uh, true and detailed, great. Okay, you're, you're not locked into your story arc. Your story arc is a jumping off point for your writing. Okay, if you wanna change it, you are the author. You have the power to change it. You created the world, you can alter the world as you see fit. Make sense? So, after this video is over, your job, okay, open your first draft. Either you're starting brand, spanking new on Google Classroom by opening up that first draft document, or you've already started a first draft, you've opened it, you've attached it to the first draft assignment so I can see it, and then you have it open. You've created your distraction-free workspace, you have your planning materials, you've set your timer. By the way, there is a timer in our virtual classroom. If you click the link on the clock, it goes to an online timer where you can set any number of minutes, 
Okay, it'll have an alarm when it hits zero. So open that up. Decide how long you wanna try writing for today. We've all gotten pretty good at writing for 10 minutes for a quiet 10. So if that feels like enough time for you, go 10. Then if you wanna write, if you wanna write more, reset that timer for 10 more. If you wanna try writing for 20 minutes in one session without stopping, go for it, okay? The, again, the only mistake you can make is to do nothing at all today, all right? Our rough drafts are not gonna be due today, but something, we wanna be able to see that we did something this afternoon, okay? They don't have to be full rough drafts done. I think I set the deadline for next Friday. So you've got plenty of time, you've got like a week and a half to write a first draft and have a first draft that feels um, pretty solid, all right? But set a timer, get rid of those distractions, and try your best with it, and you can do it, okay? Good luck, take care, and uh, small group B, I will see you in about 15 minutes uh, in the Zoom room. If you're in the groove writing, if you're in the groove writing and you wanna keep writing, keep writing, even if you're in small group B, okay? If you're in small group B and wanna check in on your writing, you can do that starting at one o'clock. All right, thanks everybody, take care, good luck, I will see you soon.